Sup YouTube, Official Coding Network, and welcome to our first episode of a new Java programming tutorial series. In this series, I'm going to go over everything that goes into making a game from scratch in Java using what is called a component-based architecture. This series is completely for beginners, and you don't need to have any programming experience prior to this tutorial, as I'll be going over what every single line of code does and why. In this, the first episode of this tutorial series, I'll be going over how to install the necessary software required to follow along with these tutorials, setting up your workspace to suit your personal preferences, and writing your very first lines of code. So, let's get started. The first thing we want to do is to install the JRE, or Java Runtime Environment. When most people refer to running software with Java, this is what they're referring to. The Java Runtime Environment is pretty much what allows us to run software written in the Java programming language. If you already have Java installed, feel free to skip this step. But for those who don't, go to your browser and type in www.java.com forward slash download. Click on free Java download and go through the installation process. The second thing you need to install is the JDK or Java Development Kit. The JRE allows you to run Java code, but to actually write Java code, you need the JDK. So go to Google or whatever search engine you use, and type in download JDK. Click on Java SC Downloads, and click the button above Java Platform JDK. Now, if you're wondering what Java SE stands for, it stands for Java Standard Edition, which is what package of Java we will be using. There are other packages of Java that extend off of this Standard Edition, which are built to be more suited for you, depending on what type of software you'll be writing. For example, Java EE, or Enterprise Edition, is suitable for developing more large-scale, multi-tiered, and reliable applications. You don't need to worry much about other editions of Java, because we'll be sticking to the Standard Edition. Anyways, Back to the JDK. In the downloads list below, you want to click Accept License Agreement and follow the download link that is suitable for your operating system. The third and final program we need to install is called Eclipse. Eclipse is an IDE which stands for Integrated Development Environment. An IDE is pretty much an application we use to write software in, and Eclipse is one of the best free IDEs for Java, so that's what we'll be using. So go to www.eclipse.org. Click on download, and click the download link here. Now, if you're wondering what Eclipse Neon is, it's a name used to represent the version of Eclipse. As of now, Neon is the newest version, so we'll be using that. After you've completed the installation process for Eclipse, then go ahead and run it. If this is your first time opening Eclipse, you'll be greeted to a prompt asking where you want your workspace to be located. Your workspace is where all the projects and other files you create in Eclipse will be stored. So select the location for your workspace and check the box that says use this as the default and do not ask again so you don't get a prompt every time you start up Eclipse. Now by default, your Eclipse should look a lot brighter than how mine currently looks. I prefer the darker theme over the brighter one, and if you want to change it, go to Window, Preferences, General, Appearance, and under theme, you can select dark and then hit apply or okay. Now your Eclipse should look a bit like mine right now. It should have a lot of UIs everywhere that we don't really want. On the top right or somewhere else on all of those UIs, there should be a little X. So click on that to close all of these UIs. Now one of the cool things about Eclipse is you can customize the workspace to make it look the way you want it to. I'm gonna show you how to make your workspace look like my personal preference, but again, feel free to customize the layout of your UIs to be whatever suits you. The first UI I'm going to open is called Package Explorer, and you'll see once we create our own project that it is an easy and clean way to browse the folders and files within your project. To open it, go to Window, Show View, and then Package Explorer. Now for some reason, you might not see Package Explorer in this little list here, and if you don't, you'll wanna click on Other, and in the search bar, type Package Explorer. It should then appear under a folder labeled Java. Click on it, and then click OK to open it. Now all that talk I did before about customizing your layout, you can do by clicking on the top of your UI and dragging it to wherever you want. Once you've dragged it to a location that suits you, you can click on the edge of the UI and drag it to resize it. Now you should all be able to see how easy it is to customize the look of your workspace in Eclipse. Now I'm going to open two more UIs, and these are called Console and Problems. 
I'm going to put both of these at the bottom. The Problems tab will show us all the errors we've made within our code. Now keep in mind, this won't show us bugs that are present within our code, but rather lines of code that don't quite make sense in the eyes of the compiler which runs all our code, i.e. syntax errors. This will be easier to understand once you see an example of this later on in the tutorial series. Now the other tab, console, is a place where we can print out any line of text that we desire, and is usually used to validate that certain things are working correctly or for other debugging purposes. Also, when our game throws an error or exception, information about what exception is being thrown and what line of code it occurred in will be given to us in the console. Now that we have everything set up, let's go ahead and create the project that will become our game. To create a project, you can either go to File, New, then Java Project, you could click on this little icon here, or you can press Ctrl N on your keyboard. So if you have this little pop-up here, click on Java Project, then Next, or if you went to File, New, then click on Java Project there. Now here, we can give a name for our Java Project, change the workspace if you want to by unchecking Use Default Location, and then browsing for a new folder, and select the JDK version we're using. Make sure you're using Java SE 1.8, which is the latest edition as of recording this video. Also, give a name for your project. I'm going to name this Tutorial Game. And when you're ready, click Finish. So now that we've created our project, if we look over to our Package Explorer, we'll see our project there. Now if you click on the little arrow next to the project icon, or double click the project, it'll open up two new folders. One of them is our source folder, in which all the code we write will be stored. In large scale projects, you may have multiple source folders, or even multiple projects that are linked together, and I may show you how to do that in a later episode, but for now, we're going to stick with one source folder and one project. But now what is this other folder named JRE System Library? Inside this folder are all the classes that come with the standard edition of Java. Now if you're wondering what a class is, it's briefly a template for an object containing code, and this will make more sense when we create our own class in a few minutes. But all these classes are available to us to use in our own code, and we'll be using quite a few of them throughout this tutorial series. And if you were to look in any of these folders, you'll see just how many classes there actually are. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I've heard there's around over 2,000 classes that come with uh, the standard Java. So now what we're going to do is create our own package. Now a package you can think of is basically equivalent to a folder. And what is a folder used for? They're used for keeping things more organized and easier to find. So, our packages we'll be using for keeping the files we create in our project more organized and easy to find. To create a package, right click on our source folder, go to New, and then Package. If you can't see Package, then once again, go to Other and search for Package there. Now in the first box, it specifies the source folder this package will be created in, which is by default the source folder we right clicked on. And the next box is the name of the package. You can name this whatever you want, but a common naming tradition is to start with com dot, and then make some other subfolders that give a little bit of information about the type of project. So in this case, I'll be naming this com dot ocn, standing for my channel name, then dot tutorial. If you're wondering what all these dots mean, they're pretty much subfolders. So you know how on websites or when you're browsing your computer's directory, a subfolder is indicated with a forward slash? Well, for packages, it's the same thing, but with a dot except for a slash. So click Finish, and you should see your newly created package under our game source folder. Now inside of this package, we're going to create a new class. Now I explained briefly what a class is before, but in more detail, a class is a template for us to write code in. Now since Java is an object-oriented programming language, we can use these templates as objects in other classes that we create and that object will inherit all the properties that we gave it inside of its class. Now, now that might seem a bit confusing at first, but when we put this concept to use in a future episode, it'll make a lot more sense. So to create a class inside of our package, we right-click our package, go to New, then Class. Now at the top of this UI, you will see the source folder and the package that this class is going to be created in, which you can change if you want. These other things you can see here, like superclasses, modifiers, and inter interfaces, we'll eventually cover in the future when they become more relevant. So, let's give a name for our class. This class is going to be the main class of our project, where we create our game loop, initialize our thread, create our window, and other things like that. Let's name this class Game, and click Enter. 
Now at the very top of this file, we can see a line of code that specifies what package this class is in. Pretty simple. Now let's look at this public class game. All the code that will be written inside of these curly brackets are a part of our class. So that means this line of code isn't inside of our actual class, but is however inside of our class file. It only exists so we can tell the compiler, or the thing that runs our code, what package this class is in. Anyways, let's move on to this public modifier. If this class is public, that means we're allowed to use it within other files inside of our project. So if we remove this public modifier, that means only other files inside the same package of this class can actually access it. If we add the public modifier back, all the files in any package we create can access this class. Alright, let's start writing our first lines of code. What we're going to create now is the main method, and I'll explain more about what it is once we've created it. So to create our main method, we'll type in public static void main and in brackets string square brackets args and finish it off with curly brackets. Now as you're typing this you might realize by default if you put a left bracket then Eclipse automatically creates a right bracket for you and same with curly brackets if you make a left curly bracket and press enter it creates another right one and the same is with square brackets. So let's get rid of this. Alright, so back to the main method. What a main method is, is where the compiler will start compiling code. When we run our game, our compiler needs to have a place to start compiling, because then it has no idea where to start. In fact, a game won't even run without a main method, so having one is necessary. Now, I'm not really going to explain what all this static, void, and string args mean, and I know I keep saying that a lot, is because I don't, and it's because I don't want to overload you all with too much information on the first episode, because then it'll be tricky to remember it. So instead, I'm going to explain all of these when they become more relevant with whatever we're coding, or when I feel like explaining it won't overload you, the viewer, with too much information. So anyways, let's print out some text inside of our console. And to do that, all we need to type is system.out.println, put some brackets in, we want to put quotation marks inside of these brackets, and remember to put a semicolon at the end, but as you saw, Eclipse automatically did that for me. Now inside those quotation marks is the text that will be printed into the console. I'm going to type hello world, but you can type whatever you want. So to run our code, we can just click this little play button up here. And if we look in the console, our text is right there. Now we don't have to print out only text, we can actually print out math equations instead of text. So to do that, we can remove these quotation marks and type in 3 plus 4. Now if we run our program again, we get 7. Just for reference, to subtract, you use a hyphen. To multiply, it's an asterisk. To divide, it's a forward slash. And to get the remainder of, it's a percentage symbol. There's a lot of background noise coming from my neighbor right now, so I'm sorry if you can hear that. But anyway, what we can also do is print out text combined with a math equation. And to do that, we can type in something in quotation marks. So, hello world, put a plus symbol and type in whatever math equation you want, so I'm going to put 3 plus 4. But however, if we run our game, we don't get the result of the math equation, but rather hello world, and then the numbers we put in. Why does it do that instead of printing out the math equation we want? That's because we're using the plus sign for two different purposes, and the compiler doesn't know what plus sign is used for what purpose. So it thinks we want to print out 3 and 4 as text rather than a math equation. So to fix this, just simply put the math equation inside brackets. And if we try this again, we get the number 7 like expected. Now if you want a space between hello world and 7, just put a space at the end of the text inside of the quotation marks, and that should do the trick. So yeah, I think that's going to wrap up the first episode. Now I'm creating this episode in a new format to how I previously made tutorials, in terms of how I record and edit it. Because of this, I would really appreciate it if you were to let me know what you think of this new format in the comments below, and even some feedback on how I can improve it. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe and share. If you're having a problem with your game, email me or leave me a private message on any one of my social medias. I'll see you all soon!